about this? What, what, is, what, what is the selling point? Yeah, well, the first is to recognize that, um, and we did some work uh, in terms of, let's look at the top thousand companies uh, around the world. What proportion of those companies disclose their GHG footprint in some way, shape, or form? Um, and the answer, once you go down to that level, is a bit more than a third. If you go to the FTSE 100, there's a, there's a rule, so you would have every FTSE 100 company disclosed. But once you get beyond those types of levels, you get down to about a third. And that information itself, and there's a report that came out uh, today or yesterday from KPMG, which underscored that actually that information is not directly comparable. It's not comparable, it's not consistent. Um, so the first thing is that this will be inclusive. It's well beyond the G20, covers the FSB membership. Um, it's inclusive in terms of um, having people from the buy side, the sell side, issuers, companies who access capital, people who prepare the accounts, all the relevant players in the private sector. The second thing that's different about this is it's focused. Uh, it's focused on climate. Focused naturally, I think, but the task force will determine it. You focus on GHG footprints of the actual uh, emissions, but you would also focus on strategy, strategy and opportunity that comes with that. We can maybe come back to that with your questions. Um, and the third thing is that this will be efficient. Um, we will use the principle of materiality to make sure that the right information is out there. So let me finish with just a comment on these other initiatives that are out there. This is not to downplay any of those other initiatives. You take innovations such as um, integrated reporting in Brazil and South Africa, which look at a huge range of sustainability metrics and a, a comprehensive uh, look at sustainability. SASB, which uh, Mike knows well, again, much more comprehensive than what we're looking at here. But this ideally is going to be the one-stop shop for the right principles around climate so that there can be a true market in transition towards a low-carbon economy. Because there are a wide range of views amongst investors and providers of capital about the urgency of the issue, about the right technologies to back, about which companies are doing better, which are doing poor, uh, uh, less well. But they don't have the information to express those views. And the point of this, and why it's different, it's to solve that market failure by providing the right information to have a true market in transition to a low carbon economy. Mike, is that the same definition of success that you have? Is that the way you look at it? Yeah, I think so. Um, Companies today recognize that um, they have liabilities. So you look at General Electric uh, being required to clean up the entire Hudson River. Nobody ever thought that those they let down the road 20 years later have an enormous uh, hit to their income statement balance sheet. Uh, companies uh, get sued by employees for things that they never in the past thought about. Uh, companies recognize that to recruit young people out of college, uh, your environmental activities are one of the things that almost every kid asks about. It has become very fashionable. Um, the marketplace does try to price in uh, the risks that companies run from environmental issues not perfectly and one of the things that would benefit everybody is if you had comparable statistics that were easily accessible so that the marketplace can make its decisions. Uh, we always have a saying at Bloomberg, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. And so a, even if it's a voluntary thing, but the collection of the data and the presentation of it uh, on a comparable basis is a great service. That's what SASB does to some extent. Uh, I'm involved with Hank Paulson and Tom Steyer in something called Risky Business. The idea there was to point out the risks to corporations. And if you think about it, the real progress that has been made in uh, reducing the damage to the environment has come from the city level of government, because that's where the people are, that's where the pollution is, that's where the solutions are. And then the private sector, both individuals buying cars that are more fuel efficient, painting the roofs of their houses white, 
um, you know, trying to use, turn the shower off quicker and whatever the case may be, and corporations who have started to worry about, uh, take advantage of being able to use green power to reduce their energy costs and uh, um, to make products that appeal to um, the public that is that are more environmentally friendly. So th there's an interest in a ways there wasn't before and it's at the local government level and at the private sector level. And somebody before asked me, well, you know, are you disappointed with what's happened? I don't know, it hasn't finished yet, so I don't know how you can be disappointed. But I, I, to me, what the federal, the national government's coming together at the beginning of this week and then the two weeks or whatever it takes for the people here to really work out the details, if you do nothing else but uh, get the public's interest in, and the public's understanding of what the consequences of doing nothing are, then the marketplace itself is, from the public is going to change people's behavior. I think the greatest example is China. There are nine Chinese cities here, uh, and a few years ago there were none, and none of those Chinese cities are here without the knowledge and acquiescence of the federal government, I assume. Um, you see pictures in China, or you can't see across the street, now you can't even see halfway across the street in some cities. Uh, the, the Chinese government is going to be the most pro-environmentally active government in the world. Why? Because they have so many problems that have come out of taking 150 million people into the middle class, building an economy, and now they, the public is standing up and saying, hey, we want clean air and pure water and that sort of thing. And governments only exist with the will of the majority of the people. So they're gonna, all of us, they are starting already. They have put a smoking ban in Beijing and the Chinese government owns the cigarette companies. So that was not an easy thing to do. They've announced they're gonna close four coal-fired power plants in Beijing. Yes, but all the other big 